good morning and uh, this is uh, me leaving Rio Grande and wet weather again. Uh, the actual ride day was actually pretty good, the, the weather held off but I'd had probably three to four days of pretty pretty crappy weather getting to uh, getting to here in Rio Grande um, which is a port city, a military city little bit of history there but it's a pretty crappy place really um, but um, I tried to leave first thing in the morning uh, but the hotel that I was staying at when, when I got to the hotel um, there was this like freestanding lampshade in there and when I looked at it it was like on an angle the, the lid of it and I just went to put the lid back on and it was sort of you know, a skewer um, and it wouldn't go back on, it needed somebody to fix it, I don't know. And uh, so, when I went to leave, they checked my room and then they said that I'd broken the lampshade. And I just said, give me a break, will you? <laughs> Seriously. Um, well, number one, how do you break a lampshade? I mean, obviously someone did, somebody did it. But just just the fact that they, they helped me up for 30 minutes. They had people go to inspect the room, they asked me. And the thing about it is, this is, you know, I've run businesses and customer service is, um, if there is no evidence and it's one word, person's word against your word, then the customer has to be given the, the right way. They wanted to charge me $100 for the, for the lampshade and I was just laughing. I said, I'm not giving you any money for that. I didn't break it. It was in the, it was on the side of the room and it was just, uh, it's just when I unpacked my bags, I just I just went and sat down and looked at it. It was just like on an angle, and I just went to straighten it, and it just wouldn't straighten, you know. Um, so anyway, they try they try to pin that on me, and uh, and I just said I'm just refusing to pay. And then they got the manager and they go just one minute, one uno momento, one uno momento, uno momento, and I'm saying, look, I want to leave, okay? This is ridiculous, and they just wouldn't let me leave. Um, and in the end, they let me leave. Like, and like, it was, it was such a bad experience at that hotel from the start to finish. Um, like, it's it, it was a hotel. It was like right in the middle of the city. It's the Grand Hotel or something like that. And um, it's like a casino as well, but it's a really run down. Like, the, the you know the sort of people that go to cr crappy casinos. Like, hard hard life is like just sort of, I don't know what I like to say, but sort of loses the game there, you know. Um, and, you know, I just basically walked around the town, it was pouring with rain all night, there was nothing really much to see. And then I went to, got all my bags packed and, and I'd already, the thing about hotels is you, when you go in there, you check in and you give them the credit card and you pay. And then you leave. You shouldn't have to go through a whole process when you leave, you should just leave. Leave your keys on the counter and leave. Um, but you know, anyway, so it sort of got off to a pretty shitty start for me. But um, I, uh, once I got on my way, I, um, you know, the, the ride was pretty calm and pretty flat for the first first hour or so, and and I dropped into a little town because it was only only had like three hours to get there, so I had plenty of time. I was taking my time, um, and. Uh, you know, sort of knowing that this was the you know issue way or it's sort of like the end goal and, and you know I was talking to a couple of guys who have done the trips a couple of times and you know they try to make it a bit more of a hero story getting there but the thing about it is you know one, one guy um, one of the guys is quite a famous uh, solo writer I'm not going to mention his name but he said like um, about 10% of people that, that want to do the trip from say uh, uh, all the way down south, only about 10% make it. Now, that's, that, that is possibly true, but the reasons why people don't make it are fairly varied. You know, we, people didn't didn't make it because they ran out of money. Uh, people didn't make it because their bikes broke down. It's not because people didn't make it because they can't make it. Uh, I mean, if you can make it, there's some really tough day riding and you have to have some sort of skill set. You don't have to, 
you have to have a, an adventure bike. I mean, you you couldn't you could do it on like people have done it on little scooters and things like that, but there would be just nightmare days, and you'd have to take all the nice roads as possible because some of the roads you just wouldn't get through on a scooter. Um, but um, if you've got a decent bike and uh, and some, and you've got time, and I think the biggest thing is patience. You know, um, once you once you uh, embark on the trip, and, and the the thing that gets a lot of people unstuck is they get impatient. And they they try to go too fast or try to get go go past too many cars, or um, and you end up, you, you'll end up having an accident. Uh, it's just inevitable. If if you're a rush rider. We're always rushing, always looking to overtake cars and just not in. You know, if I had a car in front of me that was sitting on about 100k an hour, about 65 mile an hour, I'll drop back the kilometer. Probably a little bit more than that. But if they're doing like 120, about 80, then I'm not going to be doing much faster than that um, riding. I'm just not going to do it, you know. So, um, it's either get in front of them and have them up your backside a lot, or just just drop back a mile or so and just relax. You know, simple as that. Um, and, and it's just you know, I think I think the key to it is is to have the patience when riding. Um, know your limitations. Like there's some really good adventure riders who've been riding for years and they know how to go at speed on in all in, in quite a few different conditions. Um, but at speed, you're going to get, get stuck. You're going to you're going to, you're going to come off the bike at speed. It doesn't matter how good you are as a rider because it's just situations that just arise. You know, it's not like a normal roads. If if you just had to ride on these, uh, which I think maybe within the next ten years, all the whole road, every every single road, would be paved, which will be a little bit of a shame. But it will mean more people could do this sort of trip. Um, but the, the biggest the biggest advice is to have time, have the money to do it. Your biggest expense is going to be accommodation. So if you don't have to work or do anything like I've had to do, you could pretty much camp just about every single day. It is tougher camping in Central America because the populations are so dense, and there's there's not in some parts there's not a lot of places where you can camp. But you know, people, a lot of people do stealth camping, which just means they just basically, like a road like this, they'll go off onto the little right-hand side there and just park down in a, in a, in a ditch where you can't be seen from the road um, or just under a bridge somewhere or just go off. The best, you can see the lake there to the right, the best, best places to camp are actually where you can, uh, uh, other people's properties. Uh, that would be my biggest, uh, biggest bit of advice. So here's, this is quite beautiful, this area here. So the last probably, 40, 50 miles is like this. It's really, really pretty and really nice riding. But um, yeah, so camping is is going to be all about you know. The, I didn't camp that often, but the, the, when you when you do it, if you can find a really nice property with a really nice thing on a river somewhere, just ride up and ask them if you can camp. Learn the phrases you need to learn. They're all going to say yes. And just swing them ten bucks, ten US dollars. Don't don't go there and do nothing, and just not pay them. Give them, and you know the next trip that I'm going to do. Some of the things that I've learned is get a, I'm going to get a bunch of thank you cards, um, because so many people help you along the way, um, and just write a little note to them and leave ten dollars for them. And you know, um, if you stay a few nights, leave twenty, thirty dollars. You know. Um, but you know your budget. If you're going to be camping and stealth camp and, and camping outside of parks, then I would suggest your daily budget for fuel and everything like that is still going to be, you know, sixty, sixty, seventy dollars a day. You know that's the lowest it's going to be because by the time you get your food, fuel, um, uh, the, the, your fuel is going to be the same as what it is in the US. Probably it's a bit cheaper than anywhere in Europe. Um, so it's it, you know it's about 20 US dollars, some 15 US dollars to fill up a tank, 20, 25 in some places to fill up a tank. Uh, I've got a big tank, seven gallon. Um, you know, so you, that's that's what your budget is. And if you're riding six, seven hundred miles in a day, you're going to do two tanks. Um, 
but yeah, just uh, and, and and as I was riding in, I was just like, you know, it's it's not like um, you know, I remember watching Long Way Long Way uh, Round the first time, and when they got to New York City, um, they're yeah, we did it, we can't believe it. that you could tell from Charlie and you, and that was pretty fake, you know, because you know. The, the shouting and screaming just wasn't really their, their sort of style. They just wanted something to have at the end, um, you know, to say that. But then, for me, it was, uh, for me, it was uh, just, I just started thinking about all the, all the days, all the tough days and, and all the great fun things that I've had. And it just started flashing through my mind. I don't know why, but it just did. And it, and it wasn't like the, the greatest achievement of my Life, you know, it was just a really cool thing to, to, to have done. Uh, really, sat really satisfying. So the reasons people don't make it there, it's usually mechanical, uh, because if you if this if my bike broke down, anything electrical, I'd have to get it to one of the major cities, and then I'd have to have the budget to fix it, um, and then I'd have to have the time that that would take. Like it might they might not have the parts. It might take a week, two weeks. You know, and those sort of things affect people because a lot of people who do the trip have to be back at a certain time. I mean, I, I, we knew, I, I'd heard of one guy who was on, uh, was on the boat, I'm not sure if he was on the boat with us, but they basically did it in one month from, north to, from the north of South America to the bottom. They did it in one month and that's just basically riding every single day. And you can do that, it would be a pretty boring, pretty ordinary, sore, boring trip. But um, and if, you, if you want to do it, you can do it that way. Um, but, you know, I'd say probably about, um, you know, about probably 20, 25% of the people on that boat ended up making it down there, and all for a, a large variety of reasons. You know, I've heard of people that go as couples and they end up splitting up along the way, you know. Um, so there's all, all different reasons why. Usually it would be mechanical, um, or maybe an injury, or run, run out of time. Um, those are usually the three three things, not because you can't do it. Um, so here, this is me entering Ishawaya. Um, yeah. The first part of town is all industrial and stuff like that. Where the big sign is to get, to get into Ishawaya. Um, and from here there's a few different rides you can do. I, I do a, a separate ride tomorrow or the next day. can't remember which day I did it. Uh, where I go into, um, I go to the end of the Ruta 3, which is quite a, it's a bit of a landmark. So there's two landmarks in Ushuaia. There's, there's, a, well, there's probably three. We can get some photos taken and stuff like that that a lot of the bikers do. I did two of them, I didn't bother with the third of them. There's a few few people already lined up there. I've already done the first two, so. But it's quite a pretty city. So this is one of them here. Um, and, Lucky there's a guy there on a bike, a local guy who does tours. This is a place where I stayed, I stayed above there, really nice place. Pretty run down and old, but good views of the city, a little bit a little bit out of town, nice sunsets and stuff like that. And this is the town of Shaway. It's quite a nice actual village. The town it's on a bit of a hill. Now, this is again where I stayed. Um, freaking dogs everywhere, that's the only issue. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's from the other side of Ishawaya. Um but really pretty town. But the, I mean, it's it's pretty much inaccessible, uh, the town, uh, once winter comes, uh, as far as riding the roads. I mean, I'm sure some people do it, but I think I'd imagine it'd be pretty treacherous. Um, but it's a nice little town, some great little spots to have something to eat. Um, very touristy stuff. And there's, you, you can do all sorts of trips to anywhere from there as well. Um, so, it's, so it's pretty cool. There's a fair, fair bit of police presence there. Um, but yeah, so it was just a, a, it's great to finish this leg of the journey. I now have to get back to uh, Buenos Aires. I'm going to spend like four or five days here and just explore the place a little bit and just relax and get all my stuff in order for my trip back because it's, it's quite a daunting trip back to, look at that, that's, that was uh, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, and this is the sunset, yeah. But I had a fair bit of stuff to organise for, for Buenos Aires and uh, that's there at night. Beautiful place uh, at night and um, some, some nice little rides you can go on as well from there, uh, from Ishawa. There's not much you can do, but you can go up to some glaciers and, um, and all that, but it's a pretty cool place. 
So, yeah. So, guys, um, again, thanks for listening. I've only got a few more to go and, uh, and you, you'll be done with me. Uh, I hope you have a great day and uh, any questions or comments, as always, leave them below.